What's up guys, welcome back to Deck Tech for Decks. I'm your host Caleb. If you want to support me, you can now support me through Patreon. It's my way to give back to you while hopefully making this my full-time job. You can also always use that TCG player link in the description down below. Liking, commenting, subscribing will always do the trick. And last but not least, don't forget to follow me on Moxville. With that out of the way, let's get into today's pre-con upgrade. And honestly, our commander is stacked. He has a solid way to ramp us into planeswalkers. He has a solid way to draw us more cards. And then last but not least, he has a solid way to end all of our opponents. The only thing is is the deck is not as solid as the commander let's be honest they included a lot of planeswalkers that really don't fit the strategy of a planeswalker deck what do you want with planeswalker decks you want planeswalkers that can protect themselves by either tapping down other creatures in some sort of way returning creatures to your opponent's hands and even creating a lot of creature tokens that can block for your planeswalkers so that is what we went ahead and added a lot of planeswalkers that just generate value and make blockers another thing we're going to add is a solid and consistent way to proliferate which i can't believe they excluded you know Icar moon gauntlet because that is the planeswalker card so blows my mind but we're definitely going to add that in here another thing we are going to add is jace this guy should have been in the deck with our commander's ability he can just create a ton of token copies of himself make a lot of planeswalkers and then that's just going to make our commanders minus three insane so without further ado let's get into the rest of these pre-con upgrades one last thing i did include some non-budget options at the end of the video so make sure to stay till the end for that elminster this guy's going to be awesome he's card advantage he can lower the cost of our instant and sorcery spells which is just icing on top of the cake then we even have the ability to exile expensive dead cards on top of our library to create an instant board state that protects our planeswalkers archangel elspeth this girl just protects our board by creating tokens she can even make those tokens fly if people are trying to get at our planeswalkers with some flyers to fairy temporal pilgrim this guy's extremely flexible again we have some card advantage and we have the ability to create those two two spirits that are going to get massive you will almost never have to uptick this guy you can just keep creating those spirits that get bigger and bigger because we will be drawing cards which ups his loyalty not to mention if you want to get mean that minus 12 just hoses someone over sahili filigree master i think you're seeing a theme now she draws cards she creates tokens and then if she sticks around long enough she can just buff up those tokens while reducing the cost of our artifacts will kinrith this guy puts in work in this deck he can get rid of two lethal attackers to make sure our planeswalkers are safe and then he can even draw his cards while lowering the cost of our planeswalkers the ultimate ability is kind of irrelevant but the top two are so useful you cannot not include him the eternal wanderer this is just a solid planeswalker that can create some 2-2 double strikers that we do have a lot of ways to buff up and then she's also a solid board wipe not to mention only one creature can attack her this girl's amazing when you're ahead and pretty good when you're behind when you're behind you just wipe the board and then she's probably gonna die but when you're ahead and already have a couple planeswalkers on the battlefield you can create a lot of tokens to protect her after you board wipe ensuring she stays on the battlefield and keeps making those 2-2 two, two double strikers tezzeret the seeker this guy is an all-star in the deck i can't believe he wasn't included one he can go get your chain veil which can be extremely useful he can get your Icar moon gauntlet again extremely useful another card we're adding that he can go get is staff of completion this thing's so flexible i don't see why you wouldn't include it honestly this is the best single improvement you can make to the deck tezzeret's an absolute house tamiel has an insane ceiling in this deck it can tap down those creatures that are trying to kill our planeswalkers and then there's gonna be a lot of creatures tapped whenever we cast her because people aren't ready for it and then we'll probably draw a lot of cards that turn so not only is she able to refill our hand she's able to stop our opponents from attacking us another thing if we do get to that ultimate that's going to be incredibly useful whenever our planeswalkers die they're just gonna go right back to our hand Jace Cunning Castaway. This guy rivals Tezzeret for the most impactful card we are adding just because of our commander's ability. There's also three other cards in the pre-con that can win the game by using a massive amount of planeswalkers. So this guy is the single key to winning the game for four other cards in the deck. This guy can even go infinite. All you need is Oath of Teferi, which is already in the deck, and then that Icar Moon Gauntlet. All you need to do after that is minus five him. You'll get two token copies that are at three loyalty. Then you'll zero one to proliferate, zero the other one to proliferate, and then you'll minus five both of them because you get to activate the ability twice per turn. And boom, you'll get four. And then that turns into eight. And then you can create infinite amount of Jace Cunning Castaway. Now, winning the game is going to be simple because you can now just use your Icar Moon Gauntlet to take infinite turns. And your commander should take it from there, dealing infinite damage 
damage to our opponents. Don't forget we also have Spark Shaper, Sarkhan, and Chandra to go ahead and utilize all of those token copies as well. Moving on to our non-Planeswalker upgrades, we have Ikramoon Gauntlet. I don't have to explain why this is in the deck. It should have been in the pre-con. It's so busted with Planeswalker strategies. Staff of Completion, again, this card does everything. It can add mana, it proliferates, you can draw a card, you can even untap it and do that multiple times a turn. Ignite the Beacon can get your two best Planeswalkers to your hand. I'm going after that Jason, that Tezzeret. I don't know about you. Crawl space can be really good. Now people can only attack with two creatures. Not only will this protect us from token strategies that blow up out of nowhere and drop the crater hoof, it's also just going to protect those planeswalkers. Let's talk about the talent cycle for a second. We have Teferi's talent, Elspeth's talent, and Rowan's talent, and these are all going to be incredibly impactful in the deck. Teferi's talent is going to be absolutely insane on our commander. As long as we have three planeswalkers on the battlefield, hey, let's say four planeswalkers, that turns into a plus ability, drawing four cards and dealing four damage every turn to our opponents. Elspeth's talent. This is just going to make our board extremely massive and it can honestly end games with that anthem effect, right? If we can activate our abilities more than once per turn, we can just start creating a bunch of soldier tokens and plussing them plus four, which is going to make us a whole board of five fives. That can get scary extremely fast. And even on its face, it's just a whole board of three threes, which is still terrifying. Rowan's talent can be extremely impactful in the deck. Throw it on our commander and we're creating two of those wizards every turn and then we're just getting an access to extra mana while drawing double cards and dealing double damage. It seems busted. Not to mention there's a lot of other planeswalkers in the deck that can really abuse Rowan's talent as well. Last but not least we have Windfall. Just an incredibly efficient card draw spell that can literally take you from 0 to 7 cards in hand. Now let's talk about some non-budget includes that could really buff up the deck. Contagion Engine. This is going to hose over token strategies while proliferating all of our planeswalkers to the moon. It's incredibly impactful and honestly it shot up after the Phyrexian set to over $20 so that's why it's in the non-budget section. Cyclonic Rift. This card is just a house and it's even better in planeswalker strategies where you're trying to get all of those creatures away from you. You also don't get as punished for holding up mana because you're a planeswalker strategy. You can make sure your game plan's going off just by activating those loyalty abilities and you really don't have to cast anything once your board is set up. Jace the Mind Sculptor. This guy can be incredibly impactful. We can bounce creatures to our opponent's hands. We can even zero him every turn and plus him with our commander. He's incredibly flexible. He's got some card advantage. Not to mention if you do get the ability to minus 12 him, that's just gonna suck for somebody. Teferi's Protection. The ultimate oh shit button that saves you from those massive attackers that are coming at your planeswalkers. This is going to ensure that you get at least one extra turn to try to win the game before someone else does. Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. This guy's super solid. He gives you card advantage. He untaps your lands. He can even throw impactful creatures third from the top, making sure your planeswalkers are going to be safe. Not to mention, if we do, once we do get to that minus eight, oh my gosh, we're going to be unstoppable with that emblem. That's going to do it for the upgrades, guys. If you want to see what I cut, go head down to the Moxfield description. Make sure you sort it by tagged and it'll show what I cut. The non-budget ads, the budget ads. It's incredibly easy and simple to use. Hey, while you're there, why don't you just drop a follow if you appreciate the upgrade guides and the deck techs I've been throwing out. As always, I hope this helped you in your deck building endeavors and I will see you in the next one.